My name is Paul Salopek, and I'm a journalist and fellow for the National Geographic Society. Starting next year, I intend to walk across the world in the footsteps of our ancestors who first migrated out of Africa 50,000 years ago. I'm calling this project the Out of Eden Walk, and it will take seven years and cross about 39 different borders. I've been a foreign correspondent for the past 15 years, covering Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia. So walking through stories rather than parachuting into them or flying into them or driving into them is not such a stretch. I'll be doing more of the same. The intention though, by slowing down, is to also slow readers down. I think we are missing a quality of depth and meaning in our reporting that I hope the Out of Eden Walk will address. The length of this project and its very slowness will accomplish several things. By slowing readers down, I can show them how the great global stories of our day, whether they be climate change, conflict, poverty, mass migration, are interconnected. It takes slowing down and being attentive to make these connections. Seven years of stories will accrue over the period of the walk, and that will be a legacy product of the walk, hopefully stories that will be read long after I hang up my boots in Patagonia. Naturally, with any project of this length, there are going to be special challenges. One of them is just an issue of stamina. I will not be walking all the time. About half the time, I'll be stopped, recuperating physically and mentally from the rigors of the journey, but also using that time to write and report. There'll be political problems. There'll be closed borders. What do I do when I hit a border that I can't cross? That innovative process, that serendipity, is part of the Out and Eden Walk. Our ancestors, after all, ran into huge obstacles, whether they were glaciers or predators the size of Volkswagens. So learning along the way is going to be part of the process. One of the other goals of the project is to address questions that are arising from the state of the news media today. And what I'm talking about is the atomization of the news online, the multiplication of news sources, the mass of nano headlines generated by reporters and citizen journalists alike. I'm hoping that by focusing readers and viewers on a long wave journey across the world, we can get rid of some of that clutter and we can actually spend time with the great policy stories, the great issues of our day, walking through them, examining them at three miles an hour. The routing for this journey is based on science. I'll be using the fossil record and the exploding field of genography, which is mining our DNA for evidence of our ancient migrations, as my mile markers and my guideposts across the world. Foreign correspondents normally cover stories as they happen. They fly to story A and they fly to story B. What this project hopes to do is connect the spaces in between. And the argument there is that there are hidden links between major stories of our day that never get covered because we simply don't slow down enough to see them. My approach as a foreign correspondent has always been immersive, and the walk continues that pattern. I'll be stopping in villages and towns and major cities to live and work alongside the people whose lives I'll be documenting, sometimes for days, sometimes for weeks, and on occasion for months. This long narrative project is sponsored by the National Geographic Society and the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting. Come walk along. We'll be walking from the Great Rift Valley of Ethiopia to Patagonia, the last remote shoreline where our ancestors ran out of horizon.